Welcome to She Lancer, Mom Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Angela Olfest, otherwise known as VoiceOver Angela. In this podcast, we talk about my adventures in freelancing, my voiceover business, and everything else in between. Let's get started. Well, hello there, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Angela. I am a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator, and my channel is dedicated to those of you that are just getting started out in this wonderful world of voiceover and audiobook narration. And through my channel, I answer your questions and share with you some of the tips and tricks and techniques that I use in my own voiceover business and for audiobook narration. So what I want to talk about today is a question that I, you know, I hadn't even thought about in a long, long time that I heard mentioned recently, and it brought up a really interesting question, and that is for auditions, for audiobooks in particular, or really any voiceover, do I slate? Do I slate my audition? Do I insert my name or any other information at the head of a voiceover file before I submit it to a client? That's what we're going to talk about today, so let's get into it. So if you're unfamiliar with the term slate, for those of you that are brand new or maybe you've heard it tossed around a few times before, the act of slating is when you insert your name at the very start of an audition so the listener or the client, potential client, knows who this audition belongs to. Well, or really any other information uh, at the head of a file before your actual audition starts. And I was listening to a a talk this weekend, and they brought this subject up as the subject of slating. Do I slate? Do I not slate? What is the best way to do this? Um, How does the client know that this audition is mine? And the response was, you don't want to slate unless the client specifically asks you to do so. And the reason behind this is because if you think about, you know, years ago before the advent of online casting marketplaces, like ACX and Fiverr and all of these other ones that have just come up uh, in the last few years, the voice actor or the actor in the studio would want to slate their audition if the audition was going to be then in turn sent to their agent and then in turn sent to the client via email or some other way of uh, sending sending an audio file. But and then that way they could listen to all of the the auditions that were sent to them and they can determine whose audition belonged to whose without having to see maybe the name of the file, which would have the name of the narrator in it, I would think. But today, with most of us working from our home studios, and I say most of us because I'm guessing most of us, I don't know with the current state of things with COVID if uh, any of the studios have reopened. I don't know because I have my own home studio. I apologize for my ignorance in that matter, but I would assume that most of the technological advances of today have allowed uh, the ability to send an audio file through like uh, Fiverr or ACX or Upwork, any of those, that when you send an audio file, it's actually attached to your profile or your username for that particular website. So for example, If I'm working on ACX, for example, and I'm auditioning for an audiobook and I'm recording the audition and I say, you know, how is this client going to know that this is my audition? Well, when you record and submit that audition and send it to the client, it's attached to your username. So all the client has to do is listen to your audition and if they like it, they will in turn click on your username and it'll go right to your profile or right to your message or it's linked directly to you. And that same goes for Fiverr or Upwork or any of the other online marketing places or online casting places like Voices.com, Voice123, Badalgo, any of those, your audition is linked to your username and profile. So all the client has to do is listen to it, like it, click on you, and then contact you directly to start the contract. 
hopefully. But so you definitely don't want to add in anything at the start of your audition unless you have multiple takes. Uh, that is the only, the, really the only thing that you should have included at the head of your file, at the head of your audition, that isn't your actual audition. And another thing that I heard that was really interesting, um, and I never thought about mentioning it before to other people, but at the very start of your audition, don't have even a breath or any, like, dead air. Have your audition within maybe a half a second start with your audition Unless, of course, you have more than one take. If you have more than one take, I would start the audition file with first take, something fast and simple, and then have your take, right? Have your first version of the your, of your audition. And then after that, say, second take, and then your second version of your audition. Those would be the only things that I would put in your audition other than the actual audition itself. Um, don't have a big breath, don't have a bunch of dead air at the very start of your audition. Because from a client's perspective, if they're going through multiple auditions, they don't want to hear <gasps> at the start of the audition. They want to hear your voice. They want to hear your take on their copy, right? So don't have a bunch of dead air. Don't make them wait to hear your audition because they probably won't. So... <laughs> I would say maybe room tone of maybe half a second or less, no big breaths at the start, and go right into your audition. And in addition to slating, another question I get about uh, auditions in general is how much do I send as an audition? For voiceovers, if the client sends you an entire script and they want to hear a complimentary demo of their script just to see if you're the kind of voice they're looking for for this particular piece of copy— I would choose maybe a couple of sentences in the middle, maybe one at the start, maybe one at the end. I would not narrate the entire copy. Um, just a couple of sentences, I think, would suffice. For audiobooks, if the client sends you the entire book, which sometimes happens, or an entire chapter, that does not mean that you need to record the entire chapter or the entire section that they sent you to narrate, unless it turns out to be about two minutes. I would say two or three minutes is about the max that you should read for an audiobook. That is enough time to give the client an idea of how you're going to handle what they have written. Um, if there's a particular section in that section that they sent you of copy or the manuscript uh, that has maybe a couple of different characters interacting, maybe narrate that part so the client can hear how you're going to uh, handle giving the characters uh, different voices if that's what they want. Uh, it would be a good opportunity to find out if the client does want different voices for the characters in their book. Or maybe if there's like a real dramatic part of that section of copy, I would read that. But you do not have to read the entire section that they send you uh, for an audition. Just a small slice of it. For, again, audiobooks, I would say two or three minutes tops. And for regular voiceovers, I would select just a couple of sentences so they can hear your voice and how well it matches for what they're looking for for that particular piece of copy. And that's all I have to share with you today. I thought it was a very interesting uh, comment that I heard, and I thought that I should also share that with you for those of you that are going, what is a slate? <laughs> what is it? Is that something else that I need to worry about for my audio files when I send them to clients? No. Unless the client specifically asks you to slate the audition, I would not. So that is all I have for you today. I hope that helps. If you have any questions about voiceover or audiobooks in general or the business of or where to find work, please leave them down below and I will do my best to make a video about it. If you'd like to know more about me, my work, or how I can help you get started in voiceover, then check out my website, voiceoverangela.com. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Thank you so much for listening today. I really appreciate it. If you have an extra moment, please feel free to leave a review. We'll see you next time.